Today we're going to talk about overlap rules. There are a few things that hold you accountable when you're in rotation. We're going to talk about the corner spots first. Specifically, we'll use the setter as an example. The setter is accountable to four main things. The person that follows her in the rotation, in this case this is the red outside, or the people that she follows, the libero in this case. She's also accountable to two things that don't move, which are the sideline here on the right side of the court and the end line, or the back line in this case, which also doesn't move. The setter can move anywhere inside the box that is created by the outside, the libero, and those two sidelines. The box is created when we look at each of these people. So the outside stops the setter from being able to move all the way up to the net. That's the line that she creates. The libero creates a line that stops the setter from going further to the left than the libero. You can kind of see in the demonstration with the lines, now you can very clearly see where the setter can move. If the people move, her box gets smaller. If the people move this way, her box gets bigger. So, reminder that while the setter has to stay in her box, the people that are moving also need to stay in their boxes. Their boxes are very, very similar. So, if we take a look at the box for, let's talk about the box for the outside that's in the front row here. Their box is dictated by the person that follows them, the middle back in the front row, or the middle blocker in the front row, and the setter in the back row. Again, follows the setter, is followed by the middle. As the setter moves around, the outside's box gets smaller. The same with this middle blocker. If they move, the box gets smaller or bigger. Keep in mind that the things that this outsider are worried about are a little bit different in that this outside is worried about the sideline, the right sideline again, but also the net. This outside wants to be closer to the net than the setter. So technically, we could push this outside all the way up here, bring the setter way up here, and they're still in rotation because they're still in their boxes. Even the setter is still in her box with the outside and the libero. Let's take it back really quick. So that's the basic concept as far as the two people are concerned. Remember we talked about two cor the four corner spots that you're really worried about. Now we're going to talk about the middle spots. They are slightly different. They have four things that you're also accountable to. The only difference is that one of those things is a sideline and three of them are actual moving people. So let's take a look really quick for the libero in the back row. She's following the outside, the setter is following her, and the middle in the front row is her opposite. So you can see the lines again that are drawn. Notice that these lines don't include the outside in the front row or the right side that's in the front row. So as the setter moves, the box gets smaller. As the outside moves, the box gets smaller. So the setter the outside and the middle can make this box very small. They are all still in rotation and completely legal. Now, again, if this box overlaps, this is why it's called an overlap rule, if you overlap with this person, now, now the libero is out of rotation. That includes, remember, this direction, this direction, and of course the middle coming back too far. But this outside and this right side, they're not considered important in this person's, or the libero in the back rows, overlap rules. It's only the people that they directly follow is in, is in the outside, that follow them is in the setter, or that are their opposite in these middle two spots. No one else really matters. So you can do some kind of wacky things with this concept. If you take a look at 
First, we'll look at rotation one, which we're currently in. Say we want to pull all of our passers back to hit, okay? Which we really want the outside to pass. We don't want the right side or the middle to pass. So we're gonna pull them over here, okay? Which makes the outside box a lot, sm a lot bigger. We're gonna pull the setter back, okay? And move the libero over in front of the setter. Move this outside in the back row over next to the libero. And then legally, we can pull this outside all the way back here. Because again, if you look at the box that they're supposed to be in, the box is defined by the middle blocker that's in the back row and the setter. Those are the only two people that they need to worry about to be in their box. And as you can see, this outside is clearly in their box. Now, if the outside traveled a little too far back or a little too far to the left, they would be outside their box and they'd be called out of rotation. I hope you learned a little bit about overlap rules and how to understand them. Make sure that you understand that overlap rules only apply when we're serving and when we're receiving. During play and during transition, they don't matter. So once you are done with your serve-receive, you can quickly go to base, which is where we play most of the game. Again, base is in that position of defense where everyone is in their rightful spot playing the position that they actually play, which I'm sure that everybody is happy to get into. Thanks for listening, and have a good day.